Welcome to the Joe Kilgallen Podcast, a.k.a. Kilgallen's Pub. So good to be back podcasting again. You guys are amazing. Thank you. Always like to shout out my listeners at the beginning of the podcast, especially the Patreon subscribers. In particular, my man, Chad McDaniel. This dude went above and beyond and sent me these really cool stickers that I wish I had on me so I could show the camera to people watching on YouTube that say Kilgallen's Pub, and they're really awesome. So I wanted to give a big shout out to Chad. Hope you're doing well, my man. And, um, and to everyone, you guys are great. Everyone who subscribes to the Patreon, you guys are fantastic. YouTube subscribers, closing in on 10K. We are less than 200 subscribers away from hitting that 10,000 mark. Um, do it. Tell your friends so that my children will respect me. I think that's what happens when you hit 10,000. I'm not sure. But anyway, um, a lot of good episodes to check out. Go back. If you're listening to this for the very first time, go back. Then listen to the first time I had our guest on. But also, I had Mateo Lane on last week. I had Eric Nicole Clark on recently, Roy Wood Jr., Brooks Whelan, Gareth Reynolds. Some really good episodes to check out there. Um, and you have plenty of time because there's nothing important going on in the world. So just listen to my podcast. <laughs> All right, there you go. Uh, now I'm very excited to bring on the guest, returning guest. He was on back in October, uh, just before the election. And now he's on now, um, just before the inauguration. Uh, not that that was the main reason. I wanted him back on for a few reasons. Everyone, Mike Leibovitz, how are you, Lebo? I'm good, Joe. Thanks for having me back. You know, I was uh, I was wondering it because the last time I was on was right before the the election, and now we're uh, you know uh, f- five days removed from the uh, attempted insurrection, and I was I was worried that you might be thinking of me as your uh, political guru. <laughs> Which, uh, if if you are, I'm I'm really worried for your listeners because uh, I have no fucking idea what is going on. But uh, oh bullshit! You know, you're a very wise man, and you know it. Well, you know, I just I just figure like, oh, the the president uh, led a coup and and had his ha- had his followers march on the Capitol. Can we get Beschloss? He's booked. All right, then see if Lebo can make it. It's a, it's a definite step down, but I'm, you know, I'm happy to be, it's always good to have an excuse to see you anyway. So, well, uh, and, and you look beautiful. Canceled. Oh, you look good too. Yeah. Did he? You Thank shaved you. Yeah, the I, beard. I did. The original Lebo is back uh, with a hundred percent more soul. You know, on last week's podcast, I had Mateo Lane and I confused, I thought Mateo had a joke about looking like, waluigi or something like that but it was you who had a joke about looking like wario i remember that's after right the podcast yeah what yeah yeah I, i'll try to take that like a compliment thank you yeah i just realized i, I had back-to-back episodes with some of the best mustaches in stand-up comedy you and mateo lane hey man you know when you're on a hot streak you're on a hot streak what are right? you gonna do very yeah. similar bodies mm-hmm uh yeah we'll we'll keep the frame real tight yeah i look just like mateo here's something interesting though i did want to lead off with this because i thought this was too funny on the the last time you were on the podcast you and i we were just we were we had a long episode we had a lot of fun we were catching up we were talking about separating the art from the artist i brought up how i still love michael jackson's music you said you also and then we Mm -hmm. talked about the funny coincidence with the album bad and how there are songs in which he's basically being like, I'm bad. I'm a smooth criminal. I'm talking uh-huh. to here. I'm look right. And I thought it was so funny that I cut it into a little 45 second clip. I put it on the TikTok because that's big these mm-hmm. days. And it got a shitload of views. I think it's got over 100,000 views or something now. Holy shit. And a lot of it were comments from people who were mad at us saying he's innocent. How dare you way to bind all the bullshit lies like the HBO documentaries are lies and all. And I'd be like, look, we're fans, but are, are they not funny? Are the song, you know, they're like, you just hate Michael Jackson. I'm like, I don't hate him. I love his music. We're just analyzing the lyrics in the song titles. I mean, I'm not making any accusations. Um, I'll leave that to Dave Chappelle, you know, <laughs> or, or no, he's the, he's in the other direction, I guess. Um, yeah. I don't know if he's innocent or if he's guilty, I just know what the song said. And uh, so anyway, yeah, I mean, um, uh, to uh, to all of the TikTokers who had a problem with it, um, fuck you. Uh, how about that? I mean, but that's 
here. That is the pro- that is the problem. I feel like in our society right now is that like everyone is just like so mad at everyone else all the time, and all people want to do is like, no, you're fucking this, and you're blah, 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 this, blah, 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 this. But like we forget that like we're all fucking this, and like maybe we should work on on that. You know, so that's that's my hot take for for the present uh, zeitgeist. I agree 100% with everything you just said. And I think that is a big issue right now is there's rarely like a benefit of the doubt or so much as taking something at face value. Hey, here are two comedians who found an odd coincidence on some song titles. That's interesting. That's funny. Instead, they took it as me and you you know, stomping on the grave of Michael Jackson 11 years after his death or 12 years. And I so, and I actually responded to a couple like an idiot where I'm like, look, I'm actually a big uh-huh. fan and you can't really win there because then they're like, Oh, if you're a big fan, you wouldn't be putting this shit out into the world. And it's like, it's, it's a funny little coincidence. <laughs> Some, and, and a lot of people did enjoy it. a lot of people were like, Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah. I thought that too. Or damn, I never thought of that. Holy shit. Mind blown. You know, all those kind of emojis. Um, <laughs> I have to describe emojis now. Uh-huh. Yeah, my Dude, kill me I got a lag going on my camera feed. You notice that? Yeah, you're a little choppy for me. I don't know. I, I th- where I'm at a an undisclosed location um in uh in Queens right now and the internet kind of sucks here, so I I apologize about that. Uh, undisclosed only because I guess I have all these like rabid Michael Jackson fans out to get me now. Yeah, but, uh, and they're narrowed down to Queens, which only has about 2 million people. But right. man, dude, I saw Andrew Yang posted or tweeted something where he was like talking about how hard it is for parents these days. And he just said, like, I can't imagine he like used himself as an example. And then someone's like, oh, you're using yourself as an example. Well, people have it way harder than you. And his, uh-huh. that, his tweet was basically like, I don't know how anyone can manage anyone, not himself, like anyone like this is this. I think he meant if it's hard for me, who's doing pretty good in life, how terrible must it be for everyone else? He maybe he worded it a little bit, not in the best way, but for the love of God, do you really think anyone who's followed him, do they think Andrew Yang is some like fuck the working class guy? Like, no, but people just can't wait to, if you give your, if you give up a little bit of rope, they'll hang you with it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and like, you know, like even if you don't give them any rope, they'll hang you from your, with your fucking necktie. I mean, I don't know. Like that's just, yeah, sure. You know, Andrew Yang, yeah, he's got it a lot easier than a lot of other people. He's also like got an organization that's just like trying to give a thousand dollars to as many families in the Bronx as he can. And he wants to, um, you know, instate a universal basic income. And yeah, he's fucking rich. So, you know, I don't know what he was trying to say, but like, what does being mad at Andrew Yang do? Like, does Andrew being mad at Andrew Yang for, pointing out how much how much work it is to like get things done in a small apartment does that make your apartment any bigger it doesn't so no. like what the, what the fuck are we doing here man what are we doing here what are we doing i noticed you've been tweeting a little bit more lately yeah i have spent okay so i basically uh, for about 6 months i stayed off social media entirely almost entirely and uh since this uh, capital um, siege, uh, I have just been on like a six day social media binge where I have just been like constantly on social media to the point of like telling my kids to leave me alone because I'm on Twitter. You know what I mean? Like, and um, on the one hand, it makes me feel really bad. Um, but on the other hand, I feel like I sort of, have a better understanding of like what is happening. Um, And I don't just mean like I have better information. I mean, like I have a better sense of like everyone's mental state and like what is causing the extreme vitriol and anger um, on all sides. Uh, So it's bad, but I feel like it's good. And it's fun to, if you get likes, it feels good. I mean, that feels good. But it only lasts for a second until they start slowing down. And then you're like, what the fuck? And it's, uh, yeah, it's a real, uh, this is what I think it is, Joe. Uh, So 
if you'll just allow me, give me, um, give me a little bit of rope and I'll see if I can hang myself. Um, Go for it. <laughs> okay. So I think what it is, is that um, social media is a disease, um, but we didn't recognize it until it was too late. And now everybody's got it. And turns out there's no cure. So uh, this is the situation that we find ourselves in. And I've been talking to uh, my, my friend Duncan, who I'm actually st starting a podcast with. My friend Duncan is a philosophy professor. But I've been talking to him a lot recently about how uh, the uh, uh, like to look at all of this as though um, you were writing a novel, you know, as though God were writing a novel and we're living the novel that God is writing, right? It's just like so poetic that uh, the, 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 the thing that is afflicting us all right now is an actual virus. When we live in this world of communication where, uh, you know, where, <laughs> I mean, it even has like a, a language of disease. Like the best thing you can do on social media is to go viral, right? <laughs> oh yeah, wow. And so like, if you were writing the novel, there would be a, 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 you know, just like a very obvious thematic resonance to what, to what we're experiencing right now. And uh, so anyway, I just spent a little bit of time in that world and yeah, that's my, I don't think I hung myself, but there was some rope anyway. No, you didn't. Um, and congrats on starting a new podcast. That's awesome. It sounds like, I don't know this Duncan guy, but if you're partnering with him, I'm sure he's going to be great and you're going to be great. It's, um, and I know you mean, sometimes it could be fun. You get the little dopamine rush of, oh, I got some likes and retweets. Whenever something major politically political happens, or not even political, because it wasn't political. It was what it was. I mean, it's politically motivated. But if anything big happens, I find myself more addicted to Twitter because Twitter seems like it's it's great for breaking news. You know, yeah. whether it's true or not, who knows? But I feel like that's the fastest information. I do have to say, you have to remind yourself, because you said you want to go to under get a better understanding of where the vitriol is coming from we have to remind ourselves that not everyone's on twitter and twitter still is a minority of the population i think only like 20 percent of americans have a twitter account and i, I think i read like the top 10 percent of twitter accounts make up of make up 50 percent of all tweets so there's mm -hmm. a lot of, like i got a lot of friends who have twitter accounts they never tweet anything but they check it all the time because they want to know you know, who's injured for the bears game and, and is that going to affect the the line? Should I go over the, should I gamble? Should I, you know, there's, there's sports, Twitter, there's music, Twitter, there's movie. And then there's me and you and, and other people who are comedians who want to be like, as comedians, we want to know what's going on in the world. We want to have our fingers on the pulse. Um, I don't know how you feel about knowing everything that's going on in, in the world and everything like that. But like my, Mike Bridenstine, who you know as well, he, I was talking to him about something once and he was, like when Tiger King came out, I was like, I don't give a shit to watch that. And he said, yeah. like, well, we're comedians. We should try to watch everything. And he brought up Mad Men where uh, Don Draper, like someone asked him if he'd saw the latest movie. And he goes, I see everything. And that's his job. He's in the marketing world. He needs to see everything and know everything and know what's going on. And as comedians, I don't think we need to, but I think it helps depending on what style of comedy yeah. you're doing. Like, I don't think Neil Hamburger needed to be like, oh, I saw the fucking latest Star Wars or whatever. You know, I'm trying to think of like an obscure comedian who really doesn't talk about anything topical whatsoever. Right. right. Like Emo Phillips doesn't need to see Tiger King or whatever, but, but maybe yeah. he would, maybe he could write a good joke about it. He probably, probably could. I mean, I, I think like as a comedian, like you, okay. So like every hour that you're awake, you are taking in information. So whether it's the latest breaking news or whether it's, you know, just the, the, peculiarities of your own life. I mean, that's something that you can make jokes about. And, you know, I don't know, like, yeah, I think it's more apropos for a, for a, 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 a marketing, an ad man. Yeah. The ad man's got to see everything. He's got to know what's popular. I think for a comedian, like you said, it, it totally depends um, what type of comic you are, but I do think it, it is valuable to like have your finger on the pulse in some way, whatever that way is. And there's a lot, a lot of ways in, but I mean, like, so the thing about something like Twitter is like, y you are, um, y you're getting a curated feed. What you're getting 
is not the same as anything else, as, as anyone else is getting. You're getting what you based on like who you follow and whatever. And it's basically like you can check in and see like, what does the algorithm want me to be outraged about right now? You know? And so like you, that's, I guess it's some sort of weird digital form of looking in the mirror. But I did want to say, I think that what Good you were saying, not everyone's, thank you very much. Uh, not, the, the fact that not everyone is on Twitter is true, but every journalist is on Twitter. So it's very interesting to see how like the narratives you read in the newspaper later are shaped by like memes and stuff that people are sharing on Twitter, like as it's happening. And I think like more and more what you read in the newspaper is at least instigated by Twitter. Uh, yes, they definitely shape the narrative. That is, yeah, I can't argue with you on that whatsoever. Bring it like, let's pivoting a little bit, but still kind of on the topic of Twitter, Twitter is most of the people listening. No, now as well as pretty much every social media platform, <laughs> By the way, I'm laughing because, uh, anyone listening to the podcast, this isn't affecting you, but the fucking feed is so choppy on the video side. Sorry, YouTube, uh, watchers. That every now and then, are we live? Face... Is this live right now? No, it's not live, but I doubt I could fix this later. Uh, <laughs> oh, hopefully, it's not yeah, streaming yeah. like this. But um, when I post it on YouTube, there's going to be every now and then it stops where it's like I got one eye closed and it looks like I'm about to fucking come. You know, that's that's like my uh, orgasm face is freezing uh -huh. on the one side. Anyhow, though, uh -huh. uh, <laughs> Trump got banned by every social uh -huh. media platform essentially. And someone made the point where they're like, how's he going to communicate? And it's like, well, he's the fucking president. I mean, it's insane to me that I get why it's so important to him and Obama use social media too, but we've come a long way. Like what happened to fireside chats? Get on the radio. You know what I mean? I don't, I think he was just uh, an addicted narcissist who really his, to his favorite toy got taken away from him is what happened. Yeah. Um, my, my uh, friend, Micah Fox, who's a comedian in New York had, uh, I think one of my favorite tweets, which was, Oh, it was something like, oh, really? Trump got censored. So does he no longer have, can he no longer call the press course to the press rooms that to the press room that's in his house or is everyone fucking stupid? Yeah. <laughs> and I thought that, that was it right there. No, that's perfect. Uh, Michael Fox, I've seen a lot of uh, the tweets from. I don't know. She's good. Her? She's good she, at right? Twitter. Yes, it's a she, she, her, I think. I mean, yeah, looks like one to me. <laughs> yeah, I can't remember what it says in her bio. Yeah, definitely. No, but I'll see people retweet her. I don't, I've never met her or anything like that before, but I, I've seen the tweets, but it's one, I, her profile picture isn't a woman. So I'm never sure sometimes. Micah is a female name, though, but I also know guys named Micah. Yeah, but it, it's right? a girl. Yeah, girl. It, this is a, we're talking about a girl. Yeah, girl. Glad hey, we cleared that you know? girls, <laughs> girls can be funny too. What do you know? Who would have thought? You know? <clears throat> Um, yeah, so, but Trump was, was banned by Twitter and yeah, it is like his, his favorite toy was taken away. Here's, here's what I think is interesting about that. And I'm still trying to figure out how I feel about this shit, but this is one thing that I think is very clear. Do you remember in the debate, the first debate where, you know, uh, Biden couldn't get in a, a word edge, edgewise. And it finally, at one point in just an exasperation, he was just like, Oh, will you shut up, man? Yeah. Right. And that just sort of like summed up what so many people had been feeling for so long. And that's what every, you know, every uh, Democrat in Congress, everyone in the media for four years has been trying to just get this fucking asshole to just shut up. Like, will you just fucking shut up? And then with a snap of their fingers, Facebook and Twitter just did it instantly. And, uh, and then, and you know, then they kicked off parlor and all this stuff. So it really shows you where the true power in our society lies. It's not with our politicians. It's not with the traditional media. It's with these tech oligarchs who like control, like you said, the narrative. So, it's, yeah, I like how you started with, you're trying to wrap, you know, your head around how you feel about this. I had Gareth Reynolds on the podcast about a month or so ago and maybe a little further back than that. And anyway, I'm bringing him up because I was re-listening to that podcast recently because I thought we talked about a thing and we did actually. He brought up about how Facebook needs to be broken up and all these big tech companies really do need to be broken up. And Elizabeth Warren even had that idea. And I remember at the time, so many like Republicans were kind of like, oh, that's bullshit. Ah, you know, whatever. And now they want that. 
And so that kind of made me laugh a little bit. Then to reverse it, I remember when like four or five years ago, there was, I think, a a pretty big case where this bakery didn't want to bake a gay couple a cake. And Mm -hmm. Republicans were like, yeah, they shouldn't have to bake you a cake if they don't want to bake you a cake. And so Mm -hmm. and the left was pissed off about that. But now Mm -hmm. Twitter's like, bye to Trump and these other people. And we're like, hey, remember the cake thing? It's like, yeah, but we didn't like the cake thing. So it's weird to bring that up as our example. I know it should be like a reckoning to them. I know we're bringing it up to be like, yeah, it doesn't feel so good, does it? But we should also, I I don't know. I definitely think there are terms and conditions. You know, I can't post naked pictures of myself on Facebook. Facebook's loss. And I'd get kicked off if I (laughs) Right? They would boot me. They'd be like, bye, you can't, we don't want to see red pubes. You're gone. And same with Twitter. Twitter's like, hey, listen, you can't be doing hate speech. You can't be promoting violence. And like it or not, to some people, that's Trump had a lot of warning. He abused his privileges with Twitter for a long, long fucking time in, in a lot of ways, right? And so I feel like if a private company like Twitter wants to say, hey, you're bad for our business and you're breaking our rules, you're gone. But in the same regard, people are like, that's the fucking president. You can't just mm-hmm. remove power from no one elected Twitter. No one voted. He, he, people did. A lot of people voted for him. 70 something million. They want to hear him. So they're, but in the same regard, it, fucking it's, it's Twitter. It's fucking Twitter. It's Facebook. It's Twitter. It's Instagram. It's all these fucking websites. And at the end of the day, Twitter tomorrow could be like, we're, we're taking, we're deleting ourselves. We're doing the Thanos snap to all of this shit. What's going to happen then? Are people going to be like, well, we have to march. So Twitter comes back. Like what the (laughs) fuck is wrong with us? And it goes back to what you said earlier in this podcast. It is a disease. Social media has become this fucking disease where we are now, we're slave to it. I admit I'm I'm 100% addicted. I know I am. If I went a day without it, it would be a weird, it would be withdrawal. I'd be reaching for my phone. It'd be a lot of crazy shit. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, um, a lot of good points. Um, a couple, of, uh, a couple of. Sorry, things. I bounced around a lot on that one. No, 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 no. This is this is good shit. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, so with the cake thing, um, I think that that's a hundred percent right. Okay, so the uh, the the tech the the tech platforms are private companies, right? And they do have terms and conditions. Now, here's the thing about that. Of course, it's totally arbitrary because, like people get kicked off all the time and they don't know why and there's no explanation. And if they were really applying these, you know, these uniformly, they would have kicked Trump off a long time ago. So I think that's a problem. But I think the fact remains that they're private companies and they do whatever the fuck they want. And and I, I'll also say um, that I don't think those people should have had to bake the cake for that wedding. I mean, like I totally support obviously gay marriage and equal rights for everybody. But I think a private business should be able to refuse service to anyone for any reason. And you see that like when you go into a diner, there will be a sign that says we reserve the right to res- to refuse service to anyone for any reason. So, I mean, I think that's kind of an example. Uh, I would can I cut you off real quick there. Cause yeah, I, when I remember the gay thing too, the gay cake thing, the gay thing, sorry, everyone. Um, I didn't mean to say it like that. And then being like, first of all, fuck them. If they're anti-gay, you don't want to give them money anyway. Move on. And then I did think, and so I was with you on that. I'm like, you, you shouldn't have to. You write to refuse service. But then it goes to, you're Jewish, Lebo. What if someone says, oh, you're Jewish. Get the fuck out of here. We don't want to serve Jewish people. Yeah, no, that's true. Then that starts to sound kind of like, uh, like uh, Nazism. I guess I like to think that if there were a bakery that refused to serve Jews or if there were a bakery that refused to serve gays or if there were a bakery that refused to serve, you know, anyone because of the color or black people. Right. Um, oh shit. Oh man, this is hard. No, you can't just refuse to make, yeah, yeah. You can't just refuse to make a cake for a black, for someone cause they're black. Right? Yeah, you can't do that. Yeah. No, no, I know. This is why we talk it out, though. We're good people for talking yeah. it out and the conclusions. I remember talking to a good uh, friend of mine, who you also know. I'll say her name off air. Um, super smart, and she got me on a thing because she's really big feminist. And although I agree with her on a lot, sometimes I have fun with her a little bit about it, um, just to because it's just to, for the sake of the conversation, you know. And I said, why can't men just have like a men's club? Why can't we all get together? And it's like. 
uh, we, I can't remember what she was saying. She was like, well, what if there was a club that didn't allow black men? And I'm like, well, that'd be bad, but separating by gender. And then it, it started to peel off layers. I'm like, all right, I get it. Cause my whole thing was what we were arguing about was I was saying to her, I'm like, women are just too into what the fuck men are doing. You guys got to just start your own shit. We can go over here, have our good time. You go over there and have your good time. And she's like, yeah, but you guys are over there making business decisions and maintaining power and keeping us out of that shit. And you already have the power. And for things to be truly equal, we're way behind and we're playing a game of catch up. And then I'm like, all right, fine. I get it. I still would like to be left yeah. alone for a few hours a day though. You know? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with a men's club. Aren't there men's clubs? I think, I think, but I remember it was where the Masters is played, which, by the way, the PGA, I love that the PGA kicked out all Trump courses and basically told Trump he's banned because um, he loves golf. Yeah, so much. it was fucking, fucking great. It was hilarious. Anyway, um, and again, everyone who's listening who might think these are all forms of censorship, they're not. Censorship is the government or the state. Now, if this podcast got interrupted and, and it was the federal government saying you can no longer podcast, that would be censorship. Okay? If Parler was a website in which people were advocating kidnapping governors and violence and Apple and Amazon and Google Play were all like, oh, we're not going to support an app that does that. Go find another service. Parler's like, well, that ends our business because people either have an iPhone or an Android, and those are the platforms to sell on those phones. So mm -hmm. we're not going to be able to sell or, or give our app away for free without your Google Store or Apple Store. So that, But still not censorship. Anyway, we could get to more of that in a little bit. Um, yeah. Where the golf course, uh, where they had the Masters, Augusta, um, in Augusta, Georgia, I believe. They, uh, for a long time were men only, and then they allowed two female members, like it's, I don't know, it's like seven, eight years ago now. And the thing was women could golf on the course. Women could go there and pay their fee in golf, but they just weren't allowed to be members. Women weren't banned from like playing around. They just couldn't be official members. And then here's the thing though. They still are segregated though, in a sense, because the two female members were Condoleezza Rice and the, uh, CEO of IBM at the time. And uh, Ramti, not Romney, but Ramti, something like that. Anyway, I forget her name. Those were the first two members officially. They're both Republicans. They still to this day have apparently, I read this article, I don't know how true it is still. Uh, they have zero Democrats as members. It's all Republicans. At Augusta, the only reason I really? Gave my friend, right? It's crazy. The only reason I gave my friend, um, who's a big feminist shit about that at the time, was because my argument was there are bigger issues. I'm not saying it's not an issue. But aren't there way bigger issues? I feel like there's so much ink and column space being dedicated to a golf course located in Georgia where to even afford to be a member, we're talking about like the top half of 1% or even smaller. It's expensive as hell to be a member. And usually the people who are members are people who live within the area. You know, so it's like you're fighting for, I don't know. It just seemed like to me a waste yeah. of time. It's, it's like when people argue yeah. about the WNBA players not making as much as the NBA players. And I'm like, there's, there's a revenue thing here. We got like bigger... There's bigger problems when it comes to equality between the sexes, and that is not one of them. Yeah. Well. Yeah. But uh, yeah. I mean. I mean. Until recently, uh, I think most pre prestigious golf courses didn't allow Jews and didn't allow blacks. You know, at least True. like until the '70s or '80s or something like that, or like some some like crazy insane time after the civil rights legislation was passed. There were some and, that were like 1997. Um, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I guess once you become like an established enough thing, but like if you wanted to have say, OK, say you wanted to have a poker night at your house and it was just men. No, we're having a boys night. That's OK. Right. Yeah, definitely. You, I would it would have to be. I, I don't want us to live in a world where, the, you know, you can't get together with your friends or whatever. You can't force. Because there are, look, there are differences. Different does not mean better. I think there's too much of that in the world of social media where someone will say something's different and that makes the other person think, oh, so you're saying this is better? No, it doesn't mean better. Men and women are, are different. So sometimes you want to get together. Whoa, whoa, bro. You're about to get canceled, dude. Take it easy. Men and women are what? <laughs> Men and women are what did you say? <laughs> I'm going to blame the choppy feed uh, for that in case someone tries to cancel. I'm like, no, you missed. I had like three parts there where there was jokes being made and I was obviously said mm -hmm. I'm wrong. I apologize. Right. 
Right, 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 right. No, but you're totally right. I mean, like, I think it's fun that the same people who wear T-shirts that say believe in science are also the same people who try and tell you that men and women are the same. But uh, that's another thing. That's another very uh, funny thing. I, yeah, <laughs> man. I mean, yeah, with the whole back to the whole cake thing and Twitter, if we could touch on that, I think... <sighs> Because part of me was thinking, because some I remember seeing someone like t the Twitter just wants liberals on this website, and no one else. And I remember thinking, what if someone did start a liberal Twitter, and, or 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 you know, I mean, Parler was supposed to be the Republican version, um, mm -hmm. Facebook, which I always thought Facebook was just Republican. Um, I feel like every time I go on Facebook, I'm like, it's just my Republican friends making posts here, right? Um, and, and there needs to be, I, I do want to clarify a little bit of something. Now, I disagree with the Republicans on a lot of issues. I could be friends with Republicans. These There's hardcore Trump supporters or Trump supporters in general, where it's just tough because there, uh, there was a line of decency that went away. Now, if you want to be a Republican, you're like, I want lower taxes and want like, you know, limited government involvement. And I think foreign policy should be run this way. All right, cool. We could have some discussions, but the way this guy has been over the last four years and the incompetency and, and the bullshit and, you know, people be like, what specific things? I'm like, just so many things where there are the, I read recently, the department of Homeland security is half the jobs are vacant because he never filled them because he was too stupid. To, like these things he just didn't know how to do because he had no government experience. And he put a bunch of scumbags in place, the whole drain, the swamp, everything he said he was going to do was the opposite. I'm going to drain the swamp. Everyone he hired was part of that swamp before. And, and now, and they were such scumbags that half of them are going to jail or they're being indicted. Um, everyone was tied to something. His first secretary of defense, there were pictures of him and uh, Putin, like, you know, fucking asses to ankles in Turkish bathhouses together, I think. Uh, like, you know, who's the first guy he had as his department of defense guy? He was an oil dude. Um, uh, Rex Tillerson. Yes, Tillerson. That guy was dirty as hell. He got like some award from uh, Putin that only like that very few non-Russians got, which basically means he made Putin a lot of money. And that was his well, Trump's first yeah. guy. They were and, all he, and, and he had to leave because Trump was just like so unbelievably beyond the pale that he couldn't even deal with him. Yeah. Like Rex Tillerson was Rex Tillerson was like the most corrupt person that you could imagine, like a regular Republican putting in office. You know, I, I was it Secretary of State or Secretary? I think it was Secretary of State. It might have been State. Um, I think it was State. Not State yeah, State. right. Uh, but but uh, yeah, but but he even was just like, oh man, I can't even fuck with y'all. Like because yeah, I mean no, I mean it. It's a, such a disaster. I mean the whole thing is a is a cult of personality. I mean these people who stormed the tra the Capitol were beating cops with fucking uh, American flags. Somebody took out the American flag at the Capitol and replaced it with the Donald Trump flag. And these people are patriots. So that's what he thinks of as a patriot because to him, he is America, right? So patriot means that you have my back no matter what. And he's like, he's like, um, you know, he turned, uh, he totally threw Pence under the bus. Pence who has been like, you know, walking around behind him with his hands cupped, trying to catch all of his ball sweat for the past four years. You know, and then, you know, because he won't, you know, because he won't defile the Constitution and and, uh, you know, reject electors that he doesn't have the power to reject. He's, you know, he sends his mob to go chant, hang Pence and build a fucking gallows. And I mean, it's really of all the thing after thing after thing. I think when people read about it in history books like this will be the moment that you know, that they'll teach the kids about the Trump presidency is this, this, this is a big fucking deal, even though probably more people died because of the mishandled response to the virus. This shit is just That's awesome. the mishandled response to the virus is such a great example. Is it Donald Trump's fault that a, a virus happened? No, it's not his fault that it happened, but everything he's done has been just monumentally a fuck up, a complete <laughs> failure. And that alone, I mean, and he, I'm trying to think the major bills Trump got passed. He, he fucked up some trade stuff that actually hurt our farmers. Um, what else? He kind of wrote the, the unemployment was already greatly going down before he took office. He kind of rode that wave. He had a big tax cut that really just helped rich people essentially. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. On the, poli on the policy side, that's right. He cut taxes for rich people. 
uh, he, he got some judges on the court and, um, you know, I don't know. I sort of support him, um, trying to tear up some of these trade deals, which I think have, you know, both parties have, have, uh, sort of colluded to completely fuck the working class with, you know, over the past 30 years, but, uh, Oh, you know. that's true. Yeah. NAFTA was bullshit. And, um, and that's where, yeah, I remember when he's, he was very smart when he ran in 2016, that when Bernie, um, conceded the primary to Hillary, he kind of picked up saying, Hey, I'm going to get rid of some of these awful trade deals. That's only going to screw you guys over here in the Rust Belt States that Hillary supports. That was kind <laughs> of a real smart populist message where I'm like, okay, you know, yeah, it'd be great if he did do that. I still, couldn't support him as a just like culturally no look what he's done like culturally everything i mean i i didn't i knew he'd be a bad president but i don't think i would have predicted this four years later i'll tell you what dude i mean i don't know if i predicted this either but like during the last election i don't remember if we talked about this i mean i'm sorry during this election it's so it so much has happened since then that it feels like it was four years ago but it was really what two months ago um right the election uh, uh, my biggest fear, well, my biggest fear was that he would win. My second biggest fear is what is he going to do in the time between when the election happens and, and he leaves office and it has been just as bad as you could have imagined. I mean, you know, this, this whole thing with the, before the election, preparing people for, you know, uh, uh politicizing the idea of mail-in ballots and then knowing that they'll take longer to, to count and then, you know, saying that they're fraudulent and then all of these people in Congress, I mean, these disgusting, you know, these shameless opportunists, these, you know, Holly and, and, uh, and um, Ted Cruz and a hundred people in the, in the house who like, you know, have just like spread this like obvious bullshit, obvious fucking bullshit. And I think with regard, you know, and, and so, you know, it couldn't have gone worse, but it, you know, it went as bad as it anyway, I, I feared it would be bad. Well, yeah, but and, imagine how worse the period between the election and the inauguration would have been if it would have been like back in the day when the inauguration was in March. Oh, the inauguration God, used yeah. to be in March back up yeah, until yeah, like yeah. 1880 something. I don't know when they changed. I can't remember. Um, just because it took that long to travel, you know, <laughs> if you elected a guy right. from like, you know, Georgia, it was going to take him you know, two weeks to get up there and by wagon. I don't know. Uh, yeah, but, to get out man, to go to Washington. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Get your horses together. It's, uh, yeah, dude, so many things that just, it's just the, the, I'm sorry. I'm at a loss of words for a second here, but the, the culture to me of what, how people act and how they've, is so much of a responsibility of him. The whole, the whole fuck your feelings crowd and um, all that kind of bullshit that gets brought in. And the fact that it is such a cult of personality that so many people I know who are super pro military still support him when all he's done is talk shit about the military. So yeah, much the, gen shit. the generals don't like him, but I think a the lot generals of generals hate men. him. They are, I know so many people who worship general Mattis, mad dog Mattis. They were like, this guy's the best. And he straight up said, this guy, Trump is dangerous to the United States of America. Mattis did. And I have he, so much respect he, for Mattis for doing that. Yeah. He said if he were still in the cabinet, he would support invoking the 25th Amendment. I mean, yeah, great. Oh, I mean, I how crazy, how crazy is it? Oh, what? Well, go, no, ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, how crazy is it that, that, um, that, uh, Trump has been deemed too dangerous to post on Facebook or Twitter, but, He's he's not too dangerous to uh, to uh, launch a nuclear strike. Yeah, maybe we should have the tech companies running some more stuff. They would have removed him already, right? Uh, I guess, but they have so so much of this is on on him. I mean, I mean, on them. Like like Jack Dorsey created Trump and profited by Trump, and now when he's done, cuts him off. So I don't know. There's not a whole I lot know. of accountability. Yeah, I mean, the media now it took the media to after the election to finally cut away when he was telling lies. He literally lies mm -hmm. every single day. Every day, everyone. The guy lies. And it took until then to finally start being like, you know what? He's lying. And now we've decided to cut him off. Right? It's like, why didn't yeah. you just start? You should have done that early on during like the Republican primaries in 2016. 
When well, sure. Ted Cruz is dead. Oh, you mentioned Ted Cruz. That's what I wanted to talk about. <clears throat> Ted Cruz. Is there a bigger bitch in the, on the planet Earth than Ted Cruz? Let me let me lay it out. Let me really break it down. <laughs> Preach, brother. Preach, right? <clears throat> Ted Cruz, Senator Theodore Alejandro Cruz. I don't know if it's Alejandro, but whatever. He ran for president in the primaries in 2016 against Trump. During those primaries, during debates, Trump called Cruz's wife ugly, basically. Not basically. He basically said she's a, ugh, gross. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. he accused Cruz's father of being one of the people that assassinated JFK, President Kennedy. And since that moment... Ted Cruz has been nothing but, oh, your balls. Let me take, let me lick those orange balls. Like, what a fucking little bitch. How do you look your family in the eye? How, how does his, his kids have to look at their father and be like, hey, dad, you know that guy that, that said grandpa was a murderer and that mom's a fat bitch? Um, what's his dick taste like every day? Because all you do is suck his dick. Like, there is no one more pathetic than Ted Cruz. I have two sons. I'd rather my sons grow up to be heroin addict junkies than to grow up to be anything like Ted Cruz. That's how much yeah. I despise that man. And nothing to do with his policies. If he was a Democrat and had every and agreed with that, and by the way, fuck the Democrats on a lot of shit. I'm not lock stop with them at lock step with them at all. Um, mm -hmm. but dude, I just couldn't like if you were friends with him, you'd have to be like, I'm not your friend anymore because every time I looked at you, I'd be like, You were just such a little bitch. I just, I hate that guy. <laughs> Yeah, well, I think someone like Ted Cruz probably doesn't have friends. He has people in his circle who he finds useful. You know, I mean, he's not like someone like that is, you know, just like the oiliest, oiliest politician. Just, you know, and that's the system incentivizes people like that to get ahead. I mean, I, I'm sure like hanging out at the, uh, at, you know, at the Senate lunchroom or whatever is like, I bet it's not a cool scene. I bet like everyone in there is a fucking bitch. But yeah. Uh, yeah, but no, I mean, right. No, these people don't have integrity. They're professional panderers, you know? So yeah, yeah. No, I know. I wouldn't want uh, my kids to turn out like Ted Cruz either. I'm glad we haven't turned out like Ted Cruz. I'm glad you're in a basement and I'm, uh, you know, at a, a at a friend's crash pad, you know, and, and I don't need all that, all the fucking trappings of power and all that shit. Um, but some people do. Yeah, he's the worst. And that was, that was a hell of a rant there, Joey. I mean, that was, that was good. Sorry, that was I, well mean, done. I just had to, every time I think of that guy, I just it's, he makes your skin I'm, crawl. Doesn't he? Yes, it's gross. He He's fucking gross. I bet if you shook his hand, it would be ice cold. I bet his hands are fucking always ice cold. Probably, probably. And, the, and I, thought, I saw is, a picture uh, with uh, Chris Evans, the actor who I like a lot with Ted Cruz. And I don't know when the picture was taken. It might've been like, in 2014 after like one of the captain america movies or whatever because chris evans the actor you know we we're talking about earlier how crazy people are with being mad all the time he tweeted mm -hmm. something like how did we let this happen you know like just and he's a good follow on twitter chris evans captain america of course he's um very very charitable like very supportive of uh, uh the lgbt community i think he's a gay brother um just seems like you a good love him I do. I, well, I like Captain America, man. Dude, he keeps fucking yeah. he the hammer. Come on. That guy's amazing. Because um, you're I'm a fucking Marvel. patriot. He is. Yeah. I would vote for him. I would 100%. I'd give him the nuclear codes for sure. He could. Uh, we, we've seen the movies. He gives a great speech, right? He's strong. Mm. Okay, enough. I'm, I'm gushing over that, man. But all these people started responding to him. I saw on Twitter with pictures of him with like other politicians, some of them Republican. And part of me is like, well, look, if he's at a fucking function and one of them comes up going, hey, can I get a picture with you? My son's a big fan. I'm sure he's like, yeah, all right. And he smiles for the picture. That's kind of, I don't know. It seems a little insane to me to just kind of, and you don't know when those pictures were taken. I, I don't know. It just made me, I, I'm going back to what we talked about 45 minutes ago at the beginning of the podcast, but I just don't like living in a world where we have to slam everybody for every little fucking thing. Now, if I met Ted Cruz now, I'd be like, get the fuck away from me. If I met Trump now, I'd say, get the fuck away from me. But if I bumped into Donald Trump in 2009 and it was like a photo op, I'd be like, oh, sure. I'll take a picture with the guy who says you're fired, you know? And then later someone's like, you're one of the people who supported him. I'd be like, oh, what? Yeah, dude. Yeah. And someone else, it wasn't Chris Evans, but some other 
actor maybe was the guy who plays Wolverine or I forget. I don't want to say the wrong thing, but like some video surfaced of him, like shaking hands with Donald Trump, like at a fucking baseball game or something like that. And everyone was trying to cancel him. I don't know. I mean, yeah, dude, everyone's fucking, everyone's crazy. Everyone's crazy. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy. I mean to go from captain America being the one who like smashes the Nazis to now uh, the, the pay, the Nazis are the Patriots liberating the capital. I mean, like what? That's what I'm like. What the fuck is going on? What's happening? They're I hope people don't hydro. listen for, for fuck. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. I was going to say, I hope your listeners are not like tuning in for clarity because like, I don't know. I don't understand. I don't see how anyone could ha just have any idea. Like what the fuck is happening right now? Someone made a good point too, and then and then we'll shift to some fun stuff like your album, and then we'll play a little "Fuck Mary Killed" around off the podcast. Uh, oh, fun! Yeah, someone made a point where they're like, "Were these people really insurrectionists?" By the way, insurrection does it sounds like a bad erection. Um, <laughs> it sounds like a very fancy erection, is it? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Insurrection. In, yeah. yeah. Mm. So. They were saying, were these people just a bunch of dipshit hillbillies trying to get take selfies? Because we saw some of that, people taking selfies. Like, look at me, I'm in someone's chair, I got the podium. Or were they really trying to, you know, create a coup? And it's like, it both. It could be both. It's It was a mix of, I don't know how many people, maybe close to a thousand were outside of there. And I think there were some dipshits who were just like, I got my MAGA sweatshirt on and I'm here to support my guy and I got a flag. And there were other people who were like, oh, I'm packing. I got some rounds with me and I'm going to cut, I'm going to, I'm going to slice the Senator's throat open because that's what I believe I need to do. I think there was, I think there was a mix of that craziness there. And to people saying like Trump didn't really look, there's language and there's code. And we, in that debate, we were talking about the debate earlier when Trump, uh, when Biden finally was like, would you shut up, man? Or whatever he said in that debate, they go, will you tell the proud boys to stand down? And he's like, proud boys stand down and stand by. What was the stand by? What the fuck was that? I mean, that's that's all part yeah. of the language. And he said there's going to be a reckoning on January 6th. And that's all towards this is the shit that made Twitter go, you know what? Bye. And it made all these other platforms also say bye, because we're not going to stand by and take part and, and be part of your little bullhorn to, you know, fucking call out more violence towards people and to really, th really, truly threaten our democracy. And look, I, I would, I'm not for like destruction of property and all that kind of stuff with the, with, uh, you know, a lot of the protests that happen over the summer. Um, I actually don't give a fuck if you throw a, a mailbox to a bank of America, they're a bank. They're going to, they're fucking. <laughs> yeah, we we got to go on a case by case basis. Right. Yeah. If you, <clears throat> if you burn down someone's taco truck, I'm like, Oh, that poor guy, you That's know, but, yeah. and it's a taco truck. They're delicious. They bring happiness. Bank of America's fees that are bullshit. I'm sure I'm not with basically of America. I'm with chase. You could throw something through their window. Um, but in the same regard, these were people who were really like, we need justice and justice wasn't being served. So I understand all the people who were protesting there. All right. Um, so that was, so for people to compare the protests, uh, the, the people who were protesting over the summer and, um, the people who were the, you know, these people who are, I, why am I blanking storm in the Capitol? Um, you know, I think I was going to go with the word siege, like you said earlier. And I'm like, that's not a word I use. So that's why I was hesitant to use it. Uh, I don't want to screw it up. But you never, you never watched Steven Seagal movies. You never saw Under, Under siege. siege. I saw it a long ass time ago. I forget. I'm a little older than you. All right. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, but anyway, but yeah, yeah, it's, so it's, a, it's not a fair comparison because these people, uh, who stormed the Capitol believe that an election was stolen from them because the, their cult leader was telling them an election was stolen from them. And they responded with violence. Uh, and yeah, that's just, that's treason. That's treason. Yeah. I mean, I think a major difference, I think like at some of the, there, there was some like pretty crazy shit over the summer. Like when uh, protesters like occupied a whole neighborhood of Seattle or, you know, in, in uh, Portland when they surrounded the, um, the federal building or the federal courthouse or whatever it was in Portland. Yeah, well, and there, there, what, there was some violence. And, and I think that the media was like, kind of not, you know, like trying to spin it in a, you know, in a in sort of a flattering light, but, but at, at the same time, I mean, there's no, and, and I think in those situations too, you have like a mix of people where most people are there like protesting police brutality, but then like you have like some other people mixed in with the crowd who are there to like start shit. Um, and it's like, really, I think in that kind of situation, it's hard to tell who's, who's who, 
Um, but uh, but I mean, certainly one difference is there was no leader on the left like calling for you know just you know show Bank of America you know who really holds the power in this country you know tell you know there was no one egging them on in in the way that like Trump clearly was. I mean, clearly was he incited a mob to go uh, ransack the the Capitol, like whatever they thought they were trying to do. I mean, like the scenes are just like something out of it's like something you read about, like, you know, in ancient Rome or, you know, the city getting sacked or something. I mean, it was really fucking it was it felt it looked like fiction. Yeah, it looked like speaking. Speaking of reading, have you read the book 1984 by George Orwell? Um, I've seen the movie. <laughs> I have not read the book and I've not seen the movie and I want everyone else out there. Uh, although all my listeners are very educated. They've, they've probably read it. If you have not read a book, it's okay to admit you have not read a book Too many right. people. I know so many people. It's clear that people were like, this is like 1984. I'm like, have you read that book? I know people who have used 1984 as a reference. I'm like, you have not read that fucking book because this is not like 1984 from what smart people who have read the book told me. In the book 1984, the government takes over private companies and shuts down stuff and there's real. This is private companies basically kicking out government officials. That's the opposite of 1984 of their platforms. Well, right. I mean, the other thing too is like you hear these Republican senators calling Apple and Google and Facebook communists. (laughs) It's just like, (laughs) oh, really? They're the most profitable uh, corporations in the history of the world. That's weird that they're communists. Yeah. Uh, I mean, when I think communism, I think that Amazon smiley face that goes from the A to the Z in the logo. That's right up there with the, the hammer and the sickle. Well, right. And then like what these companies are doing is they are like taking wealth from uh, poor people and reallocating them to rich people, which is not communism. Not at all. Uh, I mean, I think, you know, Mark Zuckerberg, I think last year made like an average of $30 million every day or something like that. So, you know, that's uh, they are not com- they, they might be bad, <laughs> but they're not definitely not communists. Also, I think it's funny when people say they call you know, rail against the, the um, coastal elites who are communists. It's like, well, which is it? Are they elites or are they communists? Because like the proletariat is coming for the elites. So, you know, uh, you know, pick your, uh, pick your insult. I know. And and by the way, wasn't Donald Trump a coastal elite? This is Manhattan (laughs) high rise, gold toilets and shit. Like I don't Donald Trump, Eats his or cooks, orders his steaks well done. Eats oh. pizza with a knife and fork. Hates mm-hmm. dogs and doesn't drink alcohol. This is their leader. They right. like him because I, he hates the same people they hate, and he called Rosie O'Donnell a fat bitch. That's my r- guess. R- that's exactly right. That's exactly what it is. And I think, like, actually, like, he eats steak with ketchup. Okay, well, there's probably, like, a lot of people, working class people who, like, eat their steak with ketchup who, ketchup, you right, know. Like, come on. What? No, I, I mean, I, look, I ketchup's like. fine, but, like, I no, I agree with you. I'm not giving you shit for making fun of them. I said ketchup's great, but come on. It's a steak. You could go to, I could go to anywhere and get, like, one of those little A1 knockoffs for, like, a buck. No, no, I, dude, I'm I'm with you. I'm not putting ketchup on my steak. I'm not getting it well done. But you know, I think well, like you made me feel bad know, for poor like, people for a second for not being. A no, no, no. But my my point steak. is is that like Trump, um, is like yeah, I eat my steak the way you guys eat your steak, and uh, and and fuck these people who are telling us how to eat our steak. We're lucky, you know. Whatever. I, I think that I think that the well done steak thing is like I think if you like grew up where like you know the supermarket wasn't great like you want to cook that shit all the way through you know and it's like kind of only like fancy steak that medium medium though is fine even a bad I steak i think is medium I, well done just is such an awful cut of steak anyhow all right well let's talk about um yeah i mean 1984 clearly a lot of people haven't read it they like to throw that quote around way too much um i don't know hopefully things will calm down to the point where I don't, it'd be nice that six months from now, we weren't as a society and a culture still super obsessed with politics, but I don't think it's going away. I think calls for unity, sadly, are going to fall on deaf ears because I think they're kind of bullshit too. I mean, if you've been a hardcore mega person these last four years 
and all of a sudden now you want unity it's like well fuck you because you were not doing that at all the last four years so all of a sudden yeah. you're in charge now you want everyone to get along no i think you're gonna have to eat some shit with a spoon right now and some bills you don't like are going to get passed and and you know what if they're not successful then find a candidate four years from now to run against them and this yeah. is the message to democrats because i will give democrats shit if the country is not better in four years if you really want trump and all this shit to go away and and you want you know white nationalism to die down and all that other stuff make people's lives better that's yeah man job. preach Get it the vaccine rolled out faster so people could go to concerts and comedy shows again so we could go to so lebo could have a proper uh album release party you know what i mean thank like, you yeah like that segue let's talk about the album and the artwork you debuted today and it looks fantastic my friend Dude, I'm so, yeah, I'm excited about the art is by um, this dude, Tom Bunk, who um, used to uh, do like covers and stuff for Mad Magazine. And he designed a bunch of the Garbage Pail Kids. Do you remember Garbage Pail Kids? Hell yeah. Yeah. So like, it's pretty perfect for, for the amazing. album. You did a fantastic yeah. job. It looks so cool. Um, the, uh, the album, like, as I'm sure you know, but uh, it, it came out, I mean, it was recorded like, over it was recorded like six years ago so um uh let's think of it like kind of a time capsule uh ladies and gentlemen um from a simpler time before uh, George from Bush a time Bush. when yeah come on no 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 it's not that uh, old but it is from a time when we thought twitter was for um like letting people know what we had for breakfast you know i mean it was like this is the era that it's from and it was uh, there were all kinds of um uh delays so it's it's coming out on stand up records which is dan schlissel's record label and while we were producing the album um like tragically uh uh dan's uh business partner passed away unexpectedly and then you know um then after that um the uh we had almost finished mastering the album and and the um the the sound engineer's uh apartment uh burned down and um, we were able to rescue the hard drives uh, and through data recovery, uh, save the files. Um, and then, you know, we lost some steam for, for a while. And, uh, you know, basically this was the album that the universe um, just like decided that we weren't ready for yet. And uh, now finally we're ready for it. And uh, I, you know, I've, We've got some distance on it and I listen to it and it's all material that I don't do anymore, but um, I really like it. You know, like I actually kind of didn't like it. I mean, cause you know, you record an album, you listen to it. You're like, Oh, I can do this so much better, but I'm like so far removed from it now that I listen to it. I'm like, Oh yeah, I love that bit. You know? Um, cool. So I'm excited for it. I hope, you know, uh, people will listen to it and um, maybe it'll make them happy. I don't know. Will it make I them happy? It I believe it. Maybe I'll, it if the Democrats aren't going to make people's lives better, I'll fucking do it. All right. Download my album. It'll make your life better. All right. There you go. There you go. I, I think people are going to love it. I will say this though. Don't, I know you're just talking to me right now. It doesn't matter what date it came out. Your comedy is timeless. Every now and then I'll see a comedian make a post where they'll be like, this is an old joke. And I'm like, Hey, do you know who doesn't know it's an old joke? strangers who might come across this it's new it's new to everybody it's new to us yeah so maybe maybe that's not the best selling point for the album but i you know i actually think that it to me it kind of is i don't know like i feel like nostalgic for it's not i'm none of, none of the material is topical and actually some of it like there's this confederate flag joke on there that i feel like is more more timely now than it was then but um yeah i don't know i mean it's um yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, people will like it, and I stand by it. I think it's fucking great. So, there. Deal with it. I'm, I'm. Everyone, I'm gonna hype it up when it comes out. I was gonna retweet your tweet today, but I, I do a thing where I retweet it and tell people to buy it the day it comes out. Because I've noticed, you know, if you say, "Hey, three weeks from today," by the time three weeks rolls around, people are like bored of it, or they, I don't know. I'm trying to figure out the right way to promote things these days. You ever know? You're doing great. Oh, oh, thanks, man. I'm trying to figure uh, it out. 
Yeah, no, you're a fucking big star with all the TikTok kids, man. You're killing it. I, I look up to you. Oh, yeah. thank you. <laughs> I am doing pretty I good on TikTok. It's yeah. uh, my most successful platform, <laughs> which is but, so funny to me. Well, whatever, dude. I mean, you, you're working it. You're making it work. And and the people, you're making people's lives better. People listen and they <laughs> laugh and they think. And, you know, I don't think our lives are going to get better from our, this is why, I mean, I think it's up to no, us. We can't rely on government. Up, no, we have to take personal responsibility because, you know, the, 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 the media profits by division. You're talking about them cutting away from from Trump, not cutting away from Trump. I mean, they they stay on Trump because it keeps people watching, you know, and yeah, outrage no, keeps it. Yeah, they totally suck. And the, all of our institutions suck. But we as individuals are almost all of us are good people. Almost I, I would agree with that. I mean, uh, there's a few friends who I'm kind of like. I'll, I'll talk about this briefly. I've got, I'm, a, I'm on a text thread that I really hate being a part of. Um, at the start of the text, it was for a buddy who's supposed to get married in April. And then, you know, the whole, everything being locked down with COVID and everything. And then this just became a daily text thread where I told a couple of them, I hate them. I don't actually hate them. I don't hate anybody, but um, you outgrow some friendships. And I think that's okay. I think it's okay that's to outgrow totally some friendships. Okay. I don't have any ill will towards them really. Um, I'm going to ignore them on the text thread. I can't get off the text thread because look, I have an iPhone. I don't shit on Android people. There's no difference. It's mm -hmm. just on the phone, but there's a problem. Like if, if you have a group text where it's mixed of Androids and iPhones, I can't get off the fucking group thread. You it's can't like put, the, you can't put the little um, moon thing on it. I could put the moon thing, but then I'll open my phone and see that I have 97 missed texts. So I still, but at like, least you won't get a phone. notification every single. Yeah, time. I, I have that. I have them on Moon, but I'll still see them there. And then you know, I'm a curious by nature person, mm -hmm. um, so I I do ignore it mostly. And then some, if I'm really bored or I'm having like a day or say I'm taking a long shit, I'll be like, oh, what the fuck, let's scroll through some of these just to get the gist. And then for a while there, there people were announcing, hey, so and so's having a kid, so and so's getting engaged or got married. So I'd check in. You know, I I love a lot of the people on this thing. But as a whole, it's like, you know what? We're different people. We believe different things. Um, some of you guys, I just think are shitty. You're just fucking angry, shitty people. And I don't want to be your fucking friend anymore. And I, I, I should have been an adult and not told you and just ignored you the rest of my fucking life, which was what I thought I'd just do anyway. Cause it's like, mm -hmm. I, they felt like, Hey, you guys, who wants to go golf? And I never respond to that. Cause I don't want to go fucking golf. I want 18 holes. Mm -hmm. Listen to your stupid ass fucking jokes. These are people who are fun in my twenties. I feel like this is my therapy session with you, Lebo. I, I don't want to talk to them, but this is what I'm talking to you. They were fun in my 20s. Oh, I just forgot I was supposed to pick something up earlier today. Damn it. Anyway, they're fun in my 20s. And a co the couple people in particular, three, about three of them. And I'm 36 years old. I don't want to hear your stupid fucking just lame ass homophobic jokes anymore. They're just boring to me. Like I'm not fucking 12, right? Yeah, that shit's not cool. That's not it's cool. Just, it's, just, it's, it's like, hey, so-and-so looks ass. You know how I know you look at like, well, what is this? Like the worst Judd Apatow movie ever. Like I got to fucking deal with this, these stupid ass texts. Like, and, and just, I don't know. I just, I'm, I'm fucking done with that shit. But like you were saying, we're all good people. I think people as a whole are still good and decent, but you're right. There is the media is profits off dividing people. Um, that was the thing that we all used to agree on that the media sucks. I, I used to bitch about fake news back in like 2012, 2013. I even wrote a blog um, called shared stupidity about how on, it was on Facebook. Someone would like have a thing where it's like, Oh, uh, Barack Obama lowered the flag for Winnie Houston's death, but he didn't lower the flag for this person's death. Neither were true. And someone would share it 300,000 times. And I'd go, no, that's fake news. I haven't said how it's like fake bullshit. Then Trump comes around in 2016. He started saying this maybe late 2015, everything's fake news because they didn't like him. That That's what killed mm -hmm. me. I need a little thing where it was a critique, fake news. And it was perfect. Then he could, he could tell everyone that's fake. That's fake. And now everyone thinks it's fake. Anything that's negative or anything that doesn't sound like something they want to hear is fake. It's just yeah. A, I mean, you know, so it's, I can't eventually you've life is very short. Everyone. I try to spend my time with positive people I like and, um, and don't be afraid to cut negative people out of your life. I hear this a lot too, where it's like, Oh, you can't be friends with someone because they have different political views. Yes, you can. Well, what's, what, what's a better reason? to not be friends with someone, then they have views that oppose your views that in an important arena. Now, if, if, if someone, if you were like, they like the color blue and I hate the color blue, I'm not gonna be their friend anymore. That's stupid. 
But I'm also not saying that you have to be friends with everyone who agrees with you completely. I have a lot of Republican friends who I love to death. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying if I were to choose to be one of those people who's going to eliminate everybody because they have different political views, I would say that's a great reason to do it. Wait, what's a great reason to do it? Then to not be friends with someone because they have different views than you politically. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm not saying yeah. I do that. I have some who I have some friends who I could still be friends with if they disagree with me. That's fine. I'm just saying if I were to, I think that's okay. Yeah. I, I think the problem, I think the problem is that when somebody um, says something that you don't agree with, um, there's this tendency to attack the person who said the thing rather than attacking the, the idea that they have, right? So instead of saying, instead of saying, oh, I think that that's wrong, you're saying you're a piece of shit. Yeah. Right. And, and that, that's the problem. And that's like what what's happening on all of social media. That's the whole discourse is it's like it's all about per attacking uh, personal attacks. And there's no like if I disagree with you about something, we can talk about it and we might come to an agreement or we might not. But as long as we both respect each other, then there's there's no need to lose a friendship over it. But like, I can't be friends with you if if I say something you disagree with and you say, well, you're just a scumbag. Well, it's like, okay, I mean, that's, I don't wanna be, be friends with you, but you don't have to be friends with everyone. I mean, it's important to remember that all of us essentially are collections of flaws and those flaws are sort of woven together in a way that like makes us who we are. So yeah, of course, like everyone is a hypocrite and everyone uh, has blind spots and, and everyone can be a dick, but like, so can we. And what we're supposed to get at is the humanity that's underneath those things. That's what we share with yes. everyone. Yes. No, I like, I love the way you said that. You said that way better than I incoherently said my shit just before you. I think I was meaning yeah. to say that like, I'll see posts on social media where it's like, could you believe that people are unfriending each other because of like political views? And I think, well, yeah, I mean, sure. That, that, that makes sense. If you were going to find reasons to not be friends with someone, what, what's mm -hmm. an my better question would be to the people who say, could you believe that someone's unfriending someone over this? My question to that person would be this. What is a good reason to not be friends with someone then? They steal from I you. Think it they, they personally hurt you. I then, okay. Yes. Duh. But in the same regard, if you're someone who's like, I believe like we should have universal health care, and someone else is like, no, fuck that. I can understand those two people eventually not being friends. I'm not saying I do that. I'm saying that although there are a few people who, because of their political views being too crazy, I'm like, fuck off. Um, but I'm saying I can still be friends with people who I disagree with, but I also understand why you would be like, I just can't have you in my life anymore. I got it. Yeah. I mean, That's I think the rule, the rule of thumb there is like, you should be friends with people who on balance make your life better. And you should stop being friends with people who on balance make your life worse. I mean, there we go. I don't know. Yeah. Whatever no, I, like, that. I like, we came to a good yeah. sound conclusion there. Can I ask you this before we play fuck, Mary kill? Um, yeah. Well, before the podcast even started, I said to you, you're like, how are you doing, Joe? And I'm like, oh, you know, I was having a great day. And then I had like a bad five minutes and I'm like, fuck, like it was such a good day. And then I started being like, why can't I go? I couldn't go a whole 24 hours without losing my shit over something and having a bad four or five minutes that like really enrages me. And then I, then when I calmed down, I'm like, oh, I can't erase that. What happened now? You know what I mean? I got mad at something and you know, blah, blah, blah. I don't need to explain what happened, but it's just the fucking worst when that shit happens, man. I don't know, man. I get like so wound up and I'm like, am I the only person who has that? Does anyone else have a day where like the day is going great and then one little thing and they're just like, fuck this entire day. When really I shouldn't I mean, be like that. I should be like, this was a great day, but I had a bad moment. So what? Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, sure. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think for me, if I'm having a bad day, it tends to get worse and worse. And if I'm having a good day, it tends to get better and better, you know, but like, uh, I, I it's really hard for me. What happened, Joe, what happened? What's going All on right. with you, buddy? I don't know. You know what it was? I think I, the last six days, since I had Mateo Lane on the last week's podcast, I've been eating incredibly healthy today. I did not eat that healthy. Um, I ate healthy up till lunch. I had a great breakfast. I had scrambled eggs with, um, it's, uh, like a plant-based like sausage patty. They're plant-based though, you know, mm -hmm. so like vegan, I guess. 
and no, definitely vegan. And then I had a, a smoothie with it, a strawberry pineapple mm -hmm. thing with it was like enriched with some other shit. And um, so I was feeling great. Good breakfast there. Then really? I had this uh, plant-based chipotle bowl for lunch. Great. Mm -hmm. Snacks after that were donuts. I um, had mm -hmm. to do a self-tape audition. And those have been, I, I, I want to talk to you about those in a little bit because you're an actor. Um, yeah. Those have been a struggle for me. I've had, I've, been, I've had a nice week where I had to do a couple of them. Um, I've auditioned, for, I've had for three parts this, the last two days. Um, one I had to turn in Monday. So I guess I had the weekend, but my wife worked. So I didn't really have to do it all Sunday night and then early Monday morning. Um, then I got really stressed out about that. And then I had to do it again today for another part. And, um, and then I just eating like a pig and then we had pizza for dinner, which was delicious. But um, so I'm playing with my son right before he had, I had to put him to bed and just lying there on the ground playing with this, the polar express train thing. We got him for Christmas that he loves to death. Um, I just was uncomfortable, you know, and he wanted me to do these things where we put the guys on top of the train and I go, but you know, we can only do it a certain way because as soon as you crank up the speed, they start to fall off, you know? Mm -hmm. And so we can't really do that. And then he likes to turn the light off in the room because the train has like a light thing. And I was like, Hey, we can't do it with the light off today because you have all these extra guys on and I know what's going to happen. The light's going to go off. They're going to fall off. You're going to ask me to find them. And I'm going to be like, well, turn the light on. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And, mm -hmm. and then, and then I'm going to walk over there and step on a Lego on the way to turn the light back on. So just keep the light on. I literally mm -hmm. almost called him bro. I was like, bro, keep the light on dude. Like, just, mm -hmm. I, I don't want it to be dark. Can you just one time, you know, I don't ask you for shit. And I know I've been in a great mood. We've been doing everything you wanted today and we've been having fun playing, but for the love of God, keep the fucking light on, man. I just need the light on. I'm on my side here. My fucking stomach feels weird because my body's like, hey, dickhead, you've been eating healthy for seven days. Why did you stuff your face with donuts and the fucking fudge cookies that you like so goddamn much and now greasy ass pizza? We were doing it, man. We were doing broccoli mm -hmm. every day and lean meats and, and mostly plant-based shit. And my body was mad at me. I could tell I felt real weird on my, on my one side. And then... Mm -hmm. uh, and I got up and his light switch is one of those, like, it's not like a switch switch. It's kind of like a push button. You know what I mean? Like, or not like a push button, but you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, right? but it's like one of those wide rectangles that comes out at the top of the bottom a little bit. Thank you. That's exactly what it is. I got mad when I went to go turn it on because I did almost step on something like I predicted I would. And I hit the fucking thing. I hit it so hard I cracked it. And so then I'm like, oh, shit. And then I went to hit it. And I'm like, great. Now, if you, now the fucking lights are going to be off permanently. And then luckily there was a lamp I turned on. And then my wife was like, no, nah, if you just push it in like this, but it is cracked, we have to replace it. And then my brain goes, cool. You're just, your stupid ass temper is costing us money now, Joe. Good job. Right. Because it's right. not a replacement. It's a replacement where I have to turn off. I could probably, you watch a YouTube video to figure out how to do it myself. But I know I have to turn off all the power in the fucking house. So I don't electrocute myself. Mm -hmm. it's just, yeah. Then, yeah. It's just, and I remember thinking to myself, yeah. this was a great day up until that. Yeah. You, yeah. You fucked up. Yeah, I did. Um, yeah, <laughs> but I think you'll look back, and if you ever watch this podcast in, um, in you know, a few years from now, it'll be a pretty adorable fuck up because you smashed your light while you were playing with your boy who you love. And um, well, I hope I'm not doing know. damage to him where he's like, "God, this guy's fucking crazy." Is this how you're supposed to act when things go wrong? You make it worse. I don't know. Well, you know, I don't know. Uh, I, I always feel like with, with kids, it's sort of like you do the best that you can, but you're going to fuck up at least once a day. And um, no one makes it through being parented without being damaged by their parents. But for the most part, you keep a roof over their head. You love them. You always have their back when they need you. And, uh, you know, they'll get a little therapy, but they'll be all right. That's that's <laughs> my diagnosis. I, know. I remember thinking to myself, I love my kids so much that they're not going to be artists because to be an artist, not that my parents didn't love me, but, you know, they're divorced or some, you know, you have to have a little every like famous comedian, singer, whatever artist has a little something. Right. There's a little reason that led them to art right most of them maybe not all of them but most yeah but it's not always because their parents were shitty you're you right know? it's not always because their parents it's oh there's other outside factors you're right it's not always because their parents you that's 100 percent true um and, like, and basically every mm -hmm. i'm sorry i was gonna say i remember reading about john mulaney a few years ago and i'm like oh man he grew up with money he grew into these great schools like his parents seem like awesome people who would like, we were both lawyers or something like that, or a doctor and a lawyer. And we're going, this guy's got it perfect. And then like two weeks later, he's checking into a rehab and I'm like, Oh, I guess he doesn't. And maybe I shouldn't just assume shit about people. Cause I don't know. Everyone's got their own thing. And just cause someone grew up with money doesn't mean their life was perfect. Like, 
That's you know. right. That's right. I think don't go out of your way to fuck up your kids. You'll do it by accident anyway. And, uh, you know, just, yeah, uh, no, just, I'm, just, just, just let the universe work its course, course with that shit. No, I'm not. I would never go. I would never try to fuck up my kids, but I remember of course not, myself, not. I'm going to be such a great dad that they'll probably not need to go into fucking look at me, look at me forms of entertainment like me and you. And, um, but then, you know, maybe I'll accidentally do it and then they will. I'll be like, oh, my dad was crazy. So I went into this. Yeah. World. Also, this might sound fucking really out there, but like if they don't, like that's totally okay. Oh, no, they can like, do whatever the fuck they want to be. I'm not, I have no path picked for them. I really, honestly, yeah. I mean that. I do not give a shit what they do. They don't even have to like sports. And people who know me are like, boo, you love, dude, you love sports. I go, yeah, but like, I don't care. If they're like, if they want to go into like, you know, if he gets really into computers or really into maybe acting or I don't know if either of them do, I'm not going to encourage them one way or another. It would be kind of nice. It'd be fun. It'd be fun for me if they didn't go into sports, because then I, in my, the, my, you know, middle part of my life get to learn new shit through my kids. I get to experience a world that I didn't grow up experiencing, you know? Um, yeah. Taking them to I'm, karate or taking them to acting classes or taking them to like all the shit I didn't do. Maybe they'll go into those uh, uh, worlds and I could, you know, I'll still watch baseball games. I'm not going to, you know, but it'd be kind of fun in a sense that if, um, you know, if their passions took me to a new place too. Yeah, absolutely, man. I mean, that's like, I learned so much from my kids. And one thing that like blows me away is like how different they all are from each other. I mean, like you really don't have that much control over who they become. You, you don't, you know, you, you, you know, you try and support them and you try and encourage them where they're interested and you, you try and help them the, the skills that they'll need to just fucking get by. But like, they're going to tell you who they are. You don't get to decide you don't get to mold them it's just it doesn't work that way you're right you're 100 right have you done these self-tape auditions for for uh shows and stuff you know for tv and whatnot yeah a little bit um i've Do been like doing them? them i mean on the so let me tell you my process for doing them and it's kind of a nightmare but i still have fun with it I, um I do like that I get as many takes as I want. That part I like mind. that. Um, but I, my um, wife is really terrible to read with because um, she makes me feel very judged. And um, it's very difficult for me to do my best work when I feel like I'm constantly being judged. So uh, <laughs> what I've been doing is I've been recording my cue lines onto my computer and then playing them and playing against them as I act. So I'll get in front of the camera, put the computer off camera, you know, play the cues. I'll respond to the cues, you know? And um, what I have found is that I'm like doing a very different kind of acting where um, it, the timing is such that, you know, I just, I'm much more focused on like, saying it before the next line comes, yes. you know, or like, you know, so, uh, uh, but in a weird way, I think it's kind of like focusing on that kind of like takes my mind off of like some of the other maybe neuroses that I might have that get in my way. So I don't know, I'm having fun with it, but it is certainly, you know, Joe, I never thought I'd say this, but like, I am looking forward to a time when I can actually go back to an audition. Uh, which is yeah, like <laughs> nothing is worse than an audition except a self tape audition where you're reading your own lines, uh, your own cue lines. Well, see, I felt good about the final product. I feel very, I feel confident even in the two parts I just auditioned for. There are parts that seem very right for me. Um, the one I did, what you were just talking about, I recorded the lines, and it was nuts because I was three characters in the scene, so I had to record for two characters and then go off of those. And mm -hmm. I was doing what you were doing a couple of times. I would finish the line and my dumb self was interrupting me, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, yeah, you yeah, yeah. Yourself in the lines and you play off of that. And so I, I did it that way and it was very frustrating. And, you know, I had this thing that I had to turn in. I got, I got the notification on Friday. Like my agent emailed me on Friday for the audition and it said Monday by 10 AM. And I'm like, all right, my wife works the next two days and my dog, everyone, 
I was recovering nicely. She had surgery, like a, a, a dog version of ACL. So she's got a big cone on. She can't, I'd like carry her downstairs. She's not like a lot of rehab. She can't go up on couches. She can't jump up. And my dog was a jumper anyway. So I'm dealing with that all weekend. And I told myself, all right, Sunday night, I'll get this done. Cause it's due Monday morning. Well, Sunday night, I, I got a ring light for Christmas. I'm setting it up for the first time. I'm having trouble setting that up. I'm already exhausted from a long day. And I'm like, am I going to record this pissed off? Like, this is, this isn't the energy <laughs> I want right now. <laughs> right. So dude, I lost so my mind a bit, man. Um, and then I remember Sunday night being like, all right, I'll just wake up early Monday. I set an alarm early. And, um, of course I didn't get nearly enough sleep, but luckily my wife took the kids cause she was off Monday and then went to my mother-in-law's and, um, I was able to like get it done, but it was still annoying that process. Then, um, so that was Monday morning yesterday. And then today I had to do it. And this time I just asked my wife because like about a month or so ago, I had her do it. And like you, I felt judged. I didn't tell her this, but I'm like, I kind of felt like my wife might think I hate I'm a it. Actor. I hate it. Oh, my wife will tell me like, oh no, don't do it like that. I'm just oh, like, really? I don't even, I'm like right. trying to fucking learn the lines. This isn't how I'm going to do it. Just like, I'm just like, just read your fucking line. Don't give me direction. Read me the, I try to memorize the fucking thing. Anyway. <laughs> oh, dude, I relate you to know, this so hard, man. Yeah, I have no, it's all like, these... oh, you should do it more like this. I, I'm not even doing it. I'm just trying to say the fucking words, right? Like, I know. Anyway, I did tell yeah. her. I did tell my wife. I'm like, hey, I'm recording the rehearsal right now. This is still me just trying to get the beats down. And I'm recording this mm -hmm. part because who knows, there might be something in it. Um, also for you, Patreon subscribers, I'm going to give, I'm going to upload my deleted takes, all my horrible deleted takes from my audition today. Some of them are funny because I get mad at myself for messing up lines. I, I'm going to upload to the Patreon. So um, I would be careful about doing that because there's like, some of them are pretty serious about like non-disclosure kind of shit with the, um, you are 100% right. Yeah, I don't think I, I would do that. I, I wouldn't do that. Um, I mean, you know, maybe a few clips of, uh, I don't know, but maybe uh, I'll do a yeah, reel of me know. fucking up a word and, but you won't get, you won't know the scene. You won't know the show. I won't tell you the show or the scene. There you go. Okay. There we go. All right, Mike, let's play some fuck, Mary kill and close it out. I also remind everyone right now, when does your debut album come out? It comes out on Friday, uh, the 15th. Oh, this Friday. Fuck. Yeah. All right, cool, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. I'll be tweeting that yeah. out everybody. And the links that will has. be in the, uh, YouTube videos. All right, here we go. Fuck, Mary kill. Changing it up. I used to pick out of a big DVD bin, but I started going through the same DVDs, I realized. And so this time I'm doing it based on a little geography and based on who you are and stuff like that. Um, so I decided to go with, this one isn't geography, actually. I'm saying geography because last week, Mateo Lanes was uh, New York people. Uh, you're going to be um, famous Jewish actresses. We're doing Fuck, <laughs> Mary kill. And dude, so I just Googled, I got a little lazy with it because I just, I didn't dig deep, but I Googled famous Jewish actresses and these are the ones that popped up and dude, these, these are the three smoking as babes I've ever done for my good buddy Lebo. So you should be really proud. Hey, of right. hey, hey, thanks for looking out for me, Joey. I appreciate it, buddy. This is tough. I think. All right. Fuck, Mary kill. Here are your choices. Beautiful Jewish actresses, Natalie Portman, mm -hmm. Mila Kunis. Mm -hmm. and scarlett johansson <laughs> oh do i yeah that's uh that's tough who do you who do you kill you can't kill, who do you kill? Hmm. yeah i oh man I what, I never... was born in israel so she got dual citizenship there she's also yeah. a Yale grad or harvard it's harvard Shh, i thought it was yale but maybe it's harvard i don't know she's one she's of the ivy league She's the brainiest one. Definitely. So, or at least she presents as the, as brainy. Um, and I fear that I might feel judged by her, but then she might also inspire me to be a better man. Um, Scarlett Johansson is very intimidating. Um, um, but uh, <laughs> very attractive and very talented young woman. And Black Widow. Mila Kunis. Okay. I think I'm going to fuck Mila Kunis because she seems like fun. Yeah. Um, and great. I think, I think I'm going to marry Natalie Portman for just like the long, long, long term 
um, security and her sort of like cerebral nature. And I think I'm going to kill Scarlett Johansson because I just, I don't trust her. I feel like, I feel like there's, you know, I feel like there's like some, some weird, um, uh, you know, psychological torture slash possible murder vibe there a little bit. So yeah, I think, I think Scarlett Johansson has to go, but honestly, I would leave my wife for any of them. Um, so <laughs> I love that you threw that out there. Dude, this is a tough one. See, Mila Kunis, I think I kind of want to marry because she's really fun and she's a Cubs mm-hmm. fan. Um, <laughs> she's, oh, she's I didn't know TV. that. Yeah, she threw out the first pitch of the Cubs game. Um, a game I was at. I, I think I was at that game, actually. Um, Scarlett Johansson's in the Marvel Universe, so I'm so into that. So maybe I want to marry her. But then again, I'm like, I kind of agree with you. Natalie Portman, also in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Um, beautiful woman, but... There's some, she's super smart. I feel like she'd give me shit a lot for being not as smart as her. Mm-hmm. You know, she might yeah, pick no. up some insecurities. I don't know. So maybe, yeah, I got to marry. I want to, I'm going to bang Scarlet. I'm going to marry Mila. And I think I might kill Natalie, but then again, you make great points too. Maybe Natalie gets the best out of me. Maybe she has it so that I, I you know, learn to calm down a little bit. I mean, Joe, the, 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 the fact is there's really no wrong answer to this one. You win no matter what, except for the murder. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Well, you know, yeah. You never know what the future holds, but, um, uh, you know, ah, such is life. Um, you know, they're, they're all, uh, they're all good Jew broads. And, um, (laughs) we got to end on that now. Right. My man. (laughs) <laughs> I, I yeah yeah i can say that but you better not repeat it right so there we i go. can't repeat it and i never would dare to all right everybody that has been the podcast please please buy mike Leibovitz's album it'll be available on apple it's called two slab household this friday january 15th uh he's one of the best comedians working out there today so i know you're gonna love it and uh, follow Mike on social media he's all over twitter right now as we mentioned earlier in the podcast and he's got a podcast that'll be hitting the airwaves, I guess you could say, uh, soon. Yeah, 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 yeah. With it, like, the next couple days, probably. Hell yeah, right there. That's great news. Uh, Tell your friends about the YouTube. Uh, Check out the Patreon. I've been writing some blog-style stuff there. I'll do a solo podcast and have another one with a guest. There's a few guest ones. Lebo, I'll have a private one with you maybe on the Patreon we could do soon. That'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, hell yeah. And I'll make sure I'm, I'm in my spot with the better internet connection. You've been a really good sport about this. Uh, this Hopefully it looks all right on the thing. But, no, you've but been good yeah. on your end. I'm looking at my split screen and I've been the choppy one. So I don't really get what's happening on my end. Oh. My internet's usually pretty strong. So I think yeah, it's oh, been okay. good, bud. I say that okay, now. Right hopefully on. I look back and it's all good. Um, all right, everybody. I love it. Yeah, always a pleasure. Thanks, Joe. Cheers. Thanks for listening, everyone.